gave me the start, gave me the promises that came in my heart. He said he'd never leave, he'd always make a way. It's Jesus the Redeemer, in Christ's name I pray. The longer a slave, he made me his own. He took God's wrath, now I'm an heir to the throne. My life is in.
where to start. I still don't know. Bless you. Uh, so I tell you, I, I was one time I was talking with Greg, and uh, we were talking about. He said Greg said something to me one time. He was trying to encourage me because I was, I was thinking about like discerning the scripture, you know, when you study and. And, and there's so much, there's such a vast, gosh, an array of information that's out there. Right. And not all of, not all of it's accurate, right. so, mind you. So I mean, with the, it, it is a great asset, but at the same time, it can, it, it can work to the other direction. See it. And your insecurities. Right. And discernment is something that uh, you need to pray and seek and search. I mean, don't just take something that you heard one time as, as you know, saying that you've read after some dude you don't know. That's right. Uh, you know, there's people in my life that I listen to, study after, and, and based off of that life that they presented to me, I trust them. Right. Uh, because of the discernment there. And that, that's one thing in churches, boy, we lack a lot of godly discernment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To know the difference between a truth and a lie. Yes, help us. It's, all, it, it's in full pits everywhere. That's right. And it's justifiable by knowledge of man. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it makes sense. You know, when they say the things that they say, even me, you know, I know it's not true. I'm like, yeah. I mean, if they were selling me a car and I didn't know Jesus, I'd buy the car. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's a true statement yeah. of it. Like uh, comments that, you know, God broke the law for love. Well, it sounds good. It's not accurate. Right. But it's pretty close. <laughs> he fulfilled the law because of love. Yeah. For his son, Jesus Christ. But all these things... I was talking to Greg about studying after this guy, studying after that yeah, guy, and uh, Greg said to me, he said, you know, Jake, when I was a young preacher, he said, some of the notes that I would take in my Bible, he said, I'd go back and I'd read them months later, years later, and he'd say, what was I thinking? That's right. You know, just going, because I was, I was, I'm not saying Greg's a bad preacher, he may say, you still do, I mean, it's, it's a never-ending process That's of right. learning this. That's it. When I announced my call to preach, I didn't announce my call to perfection. Matter of fact, I announced the call to imperfection. That's right. That don't work unless Christ works in me and through me. That's it. That doesn't work is if I've got pride at stake. That doesn't work that if it's me. That's that it. doesn't work that if I have ambitions that don't line up with his. That's right. It doesn't work, guys, unless it's in him, through him, and about him. Read Colossians. Yes, yes. Right. It's all about him. Yes. This is a waste of my time talking and a waste of your time That's listening. Right. He's not magnified here this morning. Amen. Guys, it's about Him. Yes. But that about Him, in Him and through Him, it, it, it doesn't come without cost. Mm. It doesn't come without cost. Mm. And if you look at your televisions, Keaton just prayed for it. Uh, you turn your TV on this morning. Things are nuts. Yes. I mean, I'm, I was saying, I'm 35? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I thought she'd finally give a thumbs up. I was 35. Gosh, it sounds old. I thought Kelly Hicks was old. Uh, the other night, I uh, found out that me and Kelly's pretty close to the same age. It made my day. Because, like, when Kelly would walk around me, you know, she was like one of those uh, women that I'm supposed to respect as my mother. Not anymore. Respect her as my sister. There's a big difference. I thought Kelly was like 50. Maybe it's just because Keith's 80. I don't know. But you know, I had those feelings. And when she told me the other night that she was like within a year or two of me, it just like just like a weight come off of me. Yeah. I'm like, man, I don't have to act like she's my mom no more. Yeah. Welcome to the downside, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. But if you turn on your television and everything that you look at, guys, it's uh it, it's chaos. Yeah. And, and every time you know, a man stands behind a pulpit or opens his Bible in the last little bit, there's one word that they, they continue to talk about, and that's peace. Mm. This has been uh, running through me for the past couple weeks, and uh, at the end of this thing, you may say that's all he had in two weeks. I'm sorry. But if you, did, did you hear the lyrics to the song I just sung? Uh -huh. It's, uh, he's the life. Yeah. That'll give you peace. Mm. How? In a way that the world doesn't satisfy. Right, right. But see, we're so hung up on the way the world is set. By the way, that last song that we sung, uh, Keaton, Colton, the Brandon Twins, myself, and Trey wrote that. Hmm. The other day. Last Sunday. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, it just kind of happened. And 
To God be the glory. Amen. And we keep reading through the lyrics, especially Trey. You know, he wants to bash it if he can. Even if he had a hand in writing, it could be the same thing I've ever seen. But it's like everything in it, you know, you want to be true, exactly true. And that, there's not one lyric in that song we can't back up the scripture. Amen. So it was an awesome experience. I'm not saying that to esteem these young men or myself or anything. But I, I love that opportunity to seek that such and we would have these thoughts. Right. And y'all should practice this. Make this a practice in your own home. We would have these thoughts. And man, you say, Well, that's a good thought. Now wait a minute. <laughs> you know? And that was an awesome experience to get to do that. Right. The base, everything we've been given the word of God. And it's like Alistair Beck says so many times, it's so helpful if we just read it. Yeah. It's so helpful if we just read it. But we're talking about peace. And there's about three different kinds of peace that you're going to find in the Bible. And I, I want to discuss them, uh, two or three of them, and hopefully we'll get there. And God help us. That his will be done. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity yes, to stand. God, God forgive me my stammering yes. lips. Yes. Uh, yes. Lord, help yes. me. Yes. Like I said, what you want me to say. Uh, and get my mind stated. My mouth say it. Uh, Lord, that your will would be done. Uh, Lord, I don't have the answers, but you've already been answered. That's right. And God, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer in my heart and my life. And Lord, I pray that through your will this morning, that people will hear the truth and they'll apply it to their life, Lord, because that is why we're here. And it's in your precious and sweet holy name that we pray. Amen. So, I was studying on peace, and, there, and there's two different, two, three different ways that it's said. You, you can go find them. I, I'm going to touch two of them, and we'll go to the scripture there and find them. But there, there's a term that, that says peace with God. Mm -hmm. Peace with God. And then there's a peace of God. Right. And there's peace in God. Yeah, right. it's, it's, that one's terms a little different depending on your, your uh, version of your Bible. But remember how Paul would open up a letter? Uh -huh. That's peace in God. He, he, was, he was saying, hey, how can you live in peace in God? That, that's in the relationship that you know of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then the peace of God. And then it's found in Philippians. We're going to go there in a minute. But it goes past that. And it defines it itself the next verse after that when it says, Peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We're going to try to lay hands on that because that right there has made itself almost undefinable here. To yeah. to that. But then the first one that I want to cover uh, to, to get to it, because the other two don't matter. Uh, everybody all over the United States, I'm sure, that, that is some form of religion, godliness, or whatever you want to call it, is praying for some form of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, peace defined as maybe how we define it. So let, let, let's us define it this morning. I went to the Mexican restaurant this morning, and I was talking, you know, there's a translation gap between English and Spanish, and, and I'm finding out that I love how they explain things so much better than we do. Because it's so simple. And we have so many words. We have more words than any dialect in the world. They don't. They're like number two of the lowest. So the way that they describe things, when I have to you know, check and I talk back and forth and and things that, uh, that said is I said, hey, what do you think? I asked him this morning. Uh, it was a young man, the one that just got saved two or three months ago, okay? He's a babe in Christ. He don't know hardly much. Now, he's still scared to death every time he talks to me. I mean, he thinks that I'm, I don't know, I'm going to chew him up or something, but he was sitting there. I mean, I, was like, I said, hey, what do you think peace is? And he said, this is what he said. Well, when I think about it, he said, it's kind of having comfort at all levels. Hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, humanistically, it's great. I mean, everybody here, when you, you think of peace in your own personal walk, that's what you think about. Mm -hmm. Comfort. If, if you're hungry, there's no, no, no peace. Yeah, yeah. Your kids are sick, no peace. You can't pay the mortgage, no peace. Mm -hmm. uh, when things aren't going good in your marriage, no peace. I mean, to have comfortability on every level is how we would define peace, not perfection on every level, mind you, but comfortability. Because everybody in here is not perfect. That's right. Find your wife and say, see, I told you. Yeah. But we're not perfect people. So we have a level that we measure it up to, and the only standard that we have is what we've created. Yes. Everybody all right still? Yeah. Bless. Some people can look at a certain situation and have peace with it. I'm comfortable. That's all right with me. Some people look at the exact same situation and say, no, that's not good. Right. Some people can look at their bank account and there's a hundred bucks. They're happy. Yeah. Some people can look at their bank account and there's a million. They're still not happy. Right. That level of peace in human beings is created and offered by us. Yeah, that's right. mm. Now what happens when that spills over into the church? What about that? Mm -hmm. Bless. Everybody happy with the way things are this morning? Some, some were good. 
Frank's not preaching. I am sorry. Just one Sunday every now and then. <laughs> but things aren't, I mean, it, it's your discernment of it. It's like you say, you know, I look at something and I say, you know what, that's good. I'm at peace with that. You know, Floyd drove in yesterday and was like, that wall's crooked. Well, if I get it, I was happy with it because I built it. <laughs> crooked or not. But see, from individual to individual, that can change. That's right. And that's dangerous when you take that and you place that in the church. That's, right. that's dangerous when you take that and you put that in Scripture. That's dangerous when you try to stand and proclaim peace and define it your way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Help me. All right, let's go to Scripture. Yeah. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. If you read Romans chapter 4, let's back up. We're going to read the first three, last three, just to get, because it says that therefore. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness with Abraham. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us Gentiles, the whole world, okay? It was given to us, faith, grace, through faith, faith alone. Not of yourself. Hey, it's a gift of God. It's not about through faith. This is a th this is where Martin Luther's mind blew up right here. When he said it's faith alone. It's faith in Christ Jesus. It's his grace that saves you, not your merit. Right. You're never going to work your way into it. It's there freely because of what Jesus Christ did. A good thought here. Y'all take this with you. If you can't be good enough to go to heaven, you can't be bad enough to go to hell. There's yeah. only one thing that separates that statement that I made. It's faith alone in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't know Him, you should come to know Him this morning. He's here. He's readily available. Right. You're not going to obtain it no matter how many times you come to this facility. No matter how many times you think you've prayed in public money, you put in the offer plate. Makes no difference. That's Those right. without Christ will die and go to hell. Amen. But there is a way of escape through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now yeah. let's start chapter 5. Woo! Therefore! Amen. Right. Therefore! Man, I like that. Yeah. I can't get through this. You should be in my house. I'm trying to get there. Yeah. Bless you. Therefore. What? Therefore what? Everything I just said. Mm -hmm. Being justified by faith. Yeah. We have peace with God. Yeah. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. We have peace. <laughs> What's this talking about? Let me read this definition to you. The Hebrew word for peace. I can't say it real good, so just bear with me. Shalom. Translated in the Greek. I can't say that word either. Irene. It has all kinds, it says a wide semantic range, including the notations of completeness, success, fulfillment, wholeness, harmony, security, yeah. and well-being. Amen. Bless. Let me break it down into my terms here. You're perfect this morning. Amen. <laughs> Your perfection in the eyes of of an almighty God. Amen. We have, we're not lacking anything. That's right. Bless There's complete peace between me and the maker. Because Amen. of the cross at Calvary. Amen. I don't stand here lacking in one thing. When it comes to God the Father. Not because of myself. Right. But because of Jesus in me. Yeah. If that's not the Christian life you walk. Or you believe. Right. Get saved. Amen. You're never going to make it good enough. That's right. You Lord. can't get there. Hallelujah. I'm at peace. Yeah. Woo. Glory to God. In all my mistakes and yeah. shortcomings and failures, I deserve hell. Yes. But when I stand there, that Hallelujah. Moment, so why are you going to get in, J.K.? You have to talk to the Son. That's right. Blessed be My you. faith and hope is in Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And when I say we need peace, yeah. I'm saying you need perfection by the blood of Christ yeah. on your life. Amen. That's peace. That's it. If that don't get established, we can't go anywhere. That's, That's it. Right. Use it. That's peace. Yeah. When God looks at me, it's not lacking. That relationship means nothing. Hey, Amen. He doesn't look down. Come on. Boy, oh, Jake, you should have prayed more. I should have. Yeah. But I'm still perfect by the blood. Yeah. Jake, you look down, you've got an attitude problem and a mouth problem. Everybody knows that. Yeah. But you're perfect That's it. in the blood of Christ. Yeah. Jake, you should have studied more, I know. Yeah. But you're perfect. Hey, Amen. You don't know my past. I don't give a rip. I got one too. Amen. I stand perfect. Yeah. In the blood of Christ. That's it. There is yeah. no peace for those who don't know me. That's 
That's right. right. That's right. You can't go nowhere else. Quit praying for it. It ain't happening. No. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, there's Christ. no peace. That's, That's right. it. You sit there, no wonder. It's, it's a turmoil in my life. And it, but hey, if you're not perfect by Him and through Him, you've got nothing to stand on. That's right. That's right. That's right. You've got absolutely nothing. It's peace. That means perfection. Yeah. When we look at God and He looks at us, He sees His Son. Right. God's right. about to shed blood. No remission. No remission. That's no. it. Because of the blood, I'm perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm perfect. Yeah. I still keep saying it. Amen. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Bless you. Because, you know, I, I'm so hard on myself, and that's good. You know, and, and you should be too. Yeah. Yeah. Quit joking around playing with it. All this petty crap going on here at the, the church. It don't even matter. That's right. Quit playing with it. Yes, help us. It's about peace. Yeah. It's about offering Jesus to a lost and dying world. It's about sharing the good news of the gospel in spirit and in truth. Yes. God help And as long as you're in the way of that, it's not going to happen. Yes, right. help me, Father. Spirit and his truth. We offer peace. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 2. Yep. Where is that at? Yeah, that's right. We're getting more busy in my Bible. Uh, I'm going to read this. I'm going to spot right down through here to, to get to this verse. We're trying to get to 13. But you can't hardly get there. Let's read verse 1. I'm not going to read this. I might. And you, he's given life. He had quickened yeah. mm -hmm. who were dead in his trespasses and his sins. Yeah. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of the world. Mm -hmm. To the prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. The opposite of the prince of peace. Yeah. The spirit that now works in children of disobedience. Verse 4. But God. Yeah. Who is rich in mercy right. for his great love. Wherewith he have loved us even when you were dead in sin. He quickened us together. How? With Christ. Yeah. By grace you're saved. Yeah. And he's raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places. Now this is a lifestyle change. And that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Here it is. By grace you're saved. Right. Through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. We are his workmanship. Yeah. Verse 12. That at the time. You were without Christ. Mm -hmm. Take us back again. Yeah. Don't ever forget. Like the pastor preached a few weeks. You never forget where you came from. That's right. That at that time. You were without Christ. You are an alien. From the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers. From the covenant. The covenant is with Israel. God's That's people. Right. Yeah. But in Christ Jesus. He opened it up to everybody. That's right. yeah. Notice that, that that's not how it was. That's how it is now. Mm -hmm. Having no hope. And without God in the world. 13. But now. Yeah. Yeah. In Christ Jesus. That's right. You who are sometimes a long way off. He said you were a far way. Yeah. The distance was so great. You couldn't make it. You'll Amen. never make it. But now, are made nigh. What's that mean? The blood of Christ. Yes. Fourteen. For he yes. is our peace. Yes, he is. Who made both one. Yes. And he broke down the middle wall partition between us. Hallelujah. Yes. There's no male, no female. That's right. Jew, no Greek. Mm -hmm. There's only one way. That's right. And that's through the cross of Calvary. That's it. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Yes. If you want peace, there's no better place. That's right. That's right. There's no other place. There's no other name. Yes. Given among men. That's right. The peace of God. Peace with God. To know that you stand in perfection. Not because of what you did. See, some of us are trying to hold on to what we did. Yeah, yeah. There's no peace in that. That's exactly right. That's lacking. That's Let me right. tell you why. Because you're involved. Yeah, that's right. 
There's lacking in that. Well, I've, you, you've tried, you've tried, you've tried. Did you ever sit back and wonder why it's never worked out? Why you can't sit like... Have you ever wondered why you're so wishy-washy? Mm. Have you ever sat back and wondered... Because uh, the Bible says, He who begun a good work in me will finish it. Finishes what He starts. Yeah. So have you ever asked yourself why I'm such a roller coaster? It may be because you, you're living life without peace with God. That's mm. right. Not peace of God. Yeah. Peace with God. That perfection that only He gives. Now let's go to the next one. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. We'll take up. Let's, let's go to verse 4. 4-4. Four, four. Rejoice in the Lord. And I, and I love this. this. This is just, this just shows the lifestyle, guys, that we're supposed to be portraying and not trying to accomplish. That's why when we make statements like this, that's why we can't accomplish it. Because, I mean, the things that this thing requires of us, notice he puts in us mm. to acquire. You see what I'm saying? It's like there's always that, that balance. And, and I've heard it preached so many pulpits and growing up all over. If you don't do this, you're not saved. If you don't do that, you're not saved. Are there requirements? Yes, but but they're they're joys, right? You see what I'm saying? It's like you can't. I, I, it's like somebody said to me one time, it's like, man, if I wasn't born again, I'd drink a gallon of whiskey. <laughs> I thought, my goodness. I mean, if I wasn't born again, I'd sleep with every woman in Monroe County. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Where's the limit to that? Yeah, yeah. listen. That's such an ignorant statement. You yeah. see, some of y'all looking down. <laughs> That's dumb, guys. He, he calls us into something new. Yeah. yeah. He calls us into something. Are, are there desires going to be there? Absolutely. Sure. But I'm telling you, a life in Christ is going to win. Amen. A life given to the Holy Lamb of God, it wins out in the end. Yeah. He doesn't start something that he doesn't finish. That's right. So our desires in Christ. If our desires don't change, if there's no change, then we're not a new creation. That's right. And the Bible says that therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Yeah. Four, four. Rejoice in the Lord all the time. Boy, ain't that a perfect statement? Yeah. There's a lot of peace right here in that statement. Yeah. He says, rejoice in the Lord all the time. He gets, it's worthy. We're going to say it twice. That's right. Let me say it again. Yeah. And again, I say rejoice. Yeah. Let your moderation, let, let people know how you treat people. Mm -hmm. let, let people know that you're a lamb of God. Mm. Not by just your mouth. Let sure your mouth lines up with your actions. But he says let your moderation, let your kindness, let who you are in Christ be known to all men. Because the Lord is at hand. Yes, he is. It's here. It's among us. You know, he's coming back. We're going to meet him. One way or another, I'm going to see him face to face. Absolutely. But I'm not living my life waiting on him. He's here. Yeah. He's in the now. Right. He lives inside of you. He, he calls us to other places that aren't of ourselves. The Lord is at hand. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm a, I talk to people and say, hey, just come to church. Well, when I start living around, I'll come to church. No, you're not. <laughs> I never will. Yeah. That just goes back to the drinking five gallon whiskey. Yeah, yeah. There's no peace in that lifestyle. No. Do you get tired? Do you get tired? Of laying your head on your pillow at night and wondering if you're even saved? Yeah. Do you get sick of that? Do you get tired of living that way? Bless you. Get in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Get in the Word. There's peace with God. Yeah. For those who believe in Him. Amen. Be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. This is not saying be ignorant. Okay. No. If God's called you to do something, He's made a way. Yeah. That's, right. That's yeah. what this is talking about. We, we can't mind that. And I'll, I'll jump ahead myself. But be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, verse 7. And the peace mm. of God, uh, yeah. which passes all understanding. Yeah. Notice what it does. It keeps what? Your heart. Yeah. What else? Your mind. Hallelujah. You're sitting here right now and you're thinking, 
Why can't I get all this strength? It's because you didn't get the first one. Yeah. Peace with God. Amen. Transcends into peace of God. Right. When you sell out for Jesus Christ and He moves in, He radically changes us. And that may not be today, but it starts today. Yeah. It may take you a year or two, and He's going to get His way. You'll repent of your sin. Yeah. You'll see Him for what He is in light of what you are. That's right. And you'll step into peace of God. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Doubt. That's right. Doubt does not line up with the Scripture. No, no, no. He keeps your hearts and He keeps your mind. Some of us are holding on to something we did in Bible school yeah. that mattered not. Yeah. Mm. I'm not trying to make you doubt, but I'm here to tell you if I can make you doubt this easily, there's a problem. That's yeah. right. That's right. Doubt is a direct sign of unbelief. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Some of y'all are holding on to some lifestyle that you've seen somebody else with. Some of y'all are holding on to something just because you've been here that long. And in your mind and in your heart, it's never stayed. Because you don't have the peace of God. That's right. You don't have the peace of God. It's not there. Do I always feel like I'm on top of the No, I don't. But there's something that just does not line up with my understanding that I can hold on to. The Apostle Paul's writing this letter. He's been beaten. He's been mocked. They tried to kill him. Plucked out the hairs of his head. Tortured beyond. Shipwrecked. Everything. Look at what he went through. He says, hey, there's a peace. Mm, yeah, that's right. That you just don't understand. Yes, yes. I'm in my life, and, I, and, and in the times in my life, there's been avenues and valleys that I have went through. And I cannot explain to you how we made it to the other side. Yeah. There's only one explanation. Yeah, that's right. God. Peace. Amen. Yeah. Of God, which started when I accepted peace with God. Yes. I can't think of his name. Roland Taylor. You may have heard him. Roland Taylor. Go look him up. He was in the Catholic Church uh, many years ago. If you started preaching truth in the Catholic Church, it healed you. <laughs> That's right. Now they just make you a Baptist. <laughs> but uh, there are several items right there that old Roland Taylor he just couldn't go along with. A lot of it had to do with the power that the Catholic Church had. And he said he just he can't do it. The peace of God will put you in this place. Now hear me. Now we just define peace as being comfortable on all levels. And that, that's the humanistic uh, definition of it. That's what we see. When we pray for peace, uh, that's what we're praying for. I, I just don't want to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the peace that yeah. we talk about. Mm -hmm. But the, the peace of God, the perfection of God. See, that, there's the standard. It's not your standard no more. It's our standard. That's right. And that's why it's peace that uh, surpasses all understanding. Right. Because it, it's not our standard. It's His. Mm -hmm. But there's things in living for God that you're going to encounter that the peace of God, there's no explanation for it. That's right. He started preaching truth. <laughs> and they uh, convicted him of heresy. Uh, they ripped him away from his family. Uh, they drug him down to a certain city and a long way. In every account of the history of this action, he was happy. Happy. I mean, I, and, I, and you go read it. I, I really don't want to get into the gruesomeness of it, but I, I was reading through this thing, and, and I've read the martyrs and all these, these ideas because it says peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And I was looking at his life, and as it went down through there, you're talking about they said that one guy described it as, you know what? It is almost like we were taking him to a banquet mm. instead of death row. That's what he said. Don't make no sense to me. Yeah. They said as they went down the road, and every chance that he had, he'd stop, maybe they let the horses rest, they'd come to a halt, every chance, he'd lean up in the back of that wagon, you know, in the little bars, and he'd try to stick his mouth up, and he'd try to tell somebody about Jesus mm -hmm. on his way to be burned at the stake. That don't make no sense. No. He finally got to see his wife and his kids. But 
he finally got to see his wife and his kids. Now, this is really going to make no sense. And he had two little kids. And he leaned over to his wife and she said, What's going to happen? And he said, They're going to take my life. But he said, I know that. That God won't raise up a man that will help raise your kids. Yeah. God, he said that to his wife. Mm. Don't make no sense. <laughs> and they took him on down the road. They got him out of the thing and people started hollering his name. They said there's a big, big, big thing going on and he stood up. He tried to proclaim that Jesus is the only way. He's the only life. He's the only truth. And about Five or six words in, they mashed his mouth with a club. And he hit the ground. And when he got, and when he hit the ground, because he had lost all strength, he started praying out loud. God, it don't make no sense. And he would call out people's name. And they got sick and tired of hearing him pray. So they hit him with a club again and knocked him out. They give it a minute or two and they put him on stage. And it took him a while to get the fire started. But while it was going on, he finally came to. Him. And he started praising God. And I, as the flames went up over his head, he never screamed, he never shouted. He was giving God praise, honor, and glory. To the point that they were so sick of it. That one man even burned himself just to go in there and kill him. That's what hate will do. Yeah. yeah. That's the shape you'll get in when sin has consumed you. Yeah. Don't make no sense, does it? Peace that passes. Understand. All understand. That's right. So you know Christ. You've been saved. You know that you're saved. But still yet you find yourself in nothing. Still yet, you can proclaim Christ here. It's awful convenient. You can talk about Jesus on your lunch, lunch break. I mean, but as long as the peace is all comfortable, you're good. But what runs us off? Yeah, our ego. Turmoil. Mm. Right. What runs us off? When things aren't all comfortable. Right. Have you ever been to a point in your life when the going got rough and the only explanation you could give for your life was God? That's yeah, right. yeah, that's right. That's the peace hey, of God. But it don't come unless you have peace with it. That's right. You can't have one without the other. That's right. You can't sit on your back porch and look out at all God's creation and everything that he's created and talk about how good God is and how peaceful things are. That's just a humanistic definition if you don't know it. That's right. That's right. Peace with God turns into peace of God. But peace comes with a cost. Yes. That's it. Peace comes with a price. What did it cost Jesus? Everything. The prince, mind you, of peace. Mm. He gave his life that we could have peace with God. He laid down his life. He took the cross. He rose again on the third day. Yes, he did. So that we could have that peace. That's right. Peace will cost you. Peace of God has a price. Mm. It comes through experiences. The peace of God comes through God's way of working in us. You can't say it any other way. Here's why. For we know that all things. Mm. Work together for what? What did he tell Job? What did Job say? The Lord gives. Who get? Who takes away? Mm. See, we base our level of understanding on peace in and of our own thing. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Everybody here, you're guilty. I'm guilty. The Bible says he gave. But he took away. You're right. Yeah. Why? Because peace comes with a cost. Yes. And it's in the experiences that we go through. Last thought. Kind of mine. Bless you. Uh, King David. If you go to Chronicles 20, 
21. No, go read 20. Yeah, go read First Chronicles 20 and then read 21. Because in 20, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's the baddest thing you ever read. I mean, these dudes are killing everybody, winning. I mean, it's like there's no defeat. I mean, verse, you get through chapter 20, you're like, man, that's, that's, nobody can defeat these dudes. And then you go straight into 20, chapter 21, and David's like, count the, count the people. I would have too. I mean, he was proud of it. Everything he had just accomplished, he was high, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Everything that just went on, I mean, he was, you talk about comfort on all levels. They're kicking everybody's hind in. It don't matter who it was. Yeah. And David gets all wound and bound on it, don't he? Yeah. So God, just, just I tell you what. Just go tell me how many of these dudes I do have. And even Joab looks around and he says, are you sure you really want to do that? <laughs> so I mean, it just from the scriptures, just some of the sense of it, there's like, even Joab, the, the commander was like, well, Dave, you're getting a little too big for your britches. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's in the context. Yeah. So they go already, it takes nine months, nearly ten months to accomplish this. And then they come back and he gives them up. But immediately. So David knew what he did. Yeah. Immediately he knew what he did. And then Gag comes. He says, look, you got three choices. You've made a mistake. You messed up, David. Yeah. But now you're going to get to choose between three and David chooses the pestilence. The pestilence. That's the right. diseases. That's right. The sicknesses. And they come in and they kill 70,000. I mean, but here, here, here's where it gets to. There's no peace right now in that kingdom. Right. Right. When you look at the kingdom, there was all kinds of peace. Well, they're killing everybody, taking names. God's good. Mm -hmm. Look at my kingdom. Look how big this thing's getting. Look how awesome this is. Yeah. You know, I started out in this house and now I live in this house. You know, I remember when I drove this, now I drive that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can remember days when I just had this, had that, had, and you got lost in it. That's right. You got lost in it. Yeah. And then not only that, you're taking God with you in it. <laughs> yeah. You got consumed in it. Not yeah. only have you gotten consumed in what you can acquire in your riches, you've gotten consumed to the point you don't even see it. Neither do I. And then we give God the, the riches. You're telling me that we're going to give God the glory for the very thing that's taking you away from God? Mm. Mm. There's no peace. Right. You're consumed. Right. So we say God's good. 20, chapter 20, God's good. He'd give us this victory. He'd give us that victory. And then 21, we've got too big for our pants. Yeah. And they come back. David knows it immediately. So he sees the angel up on the threshing floor. He says, Stop, stop. God says, Stop. David said, I'm over I messed up. Boy, awesome thing about David. Yeah. Just as, just as mightily as he'd mess up, he'd repent just as mightily. <laughs> You should make that a practice in your life. Because in the life of David, it, it, the yeah. witness that he's given us through the Holy Scripture, it works. Right. Uh, that he repented, and he said, you got three choices. The pestilence came, and David goes up there, and he's going to buy the threshing floor. The guy comes down and says, no, 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 no. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. You're king. I'm going to give you the oxen, give you everything about it. He said, no, this is what David says. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. David said, I, I'm not, I don't want it for free. That's right. Let's That's what he said. He said, I want it. To pay full price. Yeah. That's right. I want to pay full price. Mm -hmm. I want to pay full price. What's your full price? Mm -hmm. I am crucified yeah. with. Mm. It's your life, folks. Yeah. That's the peace of God. Yeah. It's your life. It's not circumstances. It's your life. Yeah. Peace of God. When everything's well, God's so good. But when everything goes bad, where's the end? Guys, it's the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And it's going to cost you something. Yeah. The guy named Taylor. Halfway through his trip, a, a, another individual had asked him what was, you know, because it was they were riding, going crazy. Asked him about it. He said, "I'm, I'm going to have the opportunity to pay 
for truth with my own blood. Mm. Don't make no sense. What's different in his God and your God? Mm. What's the difference in his heart and your heart? What's the difference there? What's the difference of a God, the peace of God, that puts us in places we never dreamed? And the only explanation is His. Mm. What's the difference between that life and my life? Yeah. Your life? Yeah. Is it not the same God? Yeah. Is it not the same God that we serve? That will call us into a life of service. What would you pay to have peace of God? What would you pay? You can put it on a sign. And we could get some uh, money up for a, a good commercial and, and say, you know what? Uh, you could live forever. Uh, you can take this one pill and we'll add 50 years to your life mm. of, 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 of health and wealth and well-being. The American dream. Mm. Or you just don't take it and you do it God's way. Yeah. I wonder how many of us quit. Mm. Boy, I do. Yeah. I do. I've heard it. I've heard the talk. I mean, it's just, it, it's just been life. We, we don't know the peace of God. No, no. We, 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 don't, we don't know it. Yes, bless you. We're not compromised. Yeah. We're comfortable. Yes. Right. On every corner. Amen. And you'll never know it if you don't have peace with God. Jesus died for sinners. Jesus died that you could have peace. Jesus died that you could have a relationship. Jesus died that every moment of your life, He wants to be included. Mm, right. Every moment. Listen, guys. Don't tell you the bait from modern evangelical that says if you'll live right, you'll gain right. Mm -hmm. Don't take that bait. No. That's a piece of man. Right. That's not the piece of God. It's it. Listen, if you don't even know what I'm talking about here this morning, you can. Yeah. Yeah. You Great. can. Great. You say things like, how could somebody do that? It's a piece of God. Not one person that knows Jesus Christ has ever died alone. That's right. That's right. Not one person. We've seen them in the videos put the Christians on their knees. And we, we shared this before. I don't care. And you know, they would put them and they'd cut their heads off. And you, they started putting bags over their heads. Because the guys were smiling. Yeah. People were coming to know Christ. That's the peace of God. That's right. Would you give your life that your family would come to know Christ? That's the peace of God. Would you give your own flesh and blood and lay it down so that the generations after you? Mm. You say, Jake, it don't work that way. I'm telling you mm. come that on. there's only one life. Yeah. And that's in Christ. Yeah. The half-hearted stuff is as good as nothing. There's only one life. Do you know the peace of God? Lord, thank you. Church is diminishing. It's because they've not accepted the peace that only comes through your son. Lord, I don't. Uh, and God, thank you. That you never give up on me. I don't deserve
deserve to be here. Mm. You had a lot of stay in your face. Yes. But Lord, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Because of Jesus Christ, my yes. Redeemer. Yes. And Lord, I don't know what's happening tomorrow or the next day or the next day. But God, you've already offered it. And Lord, whether it be good or whether it be bad, yeah, that's right. God, whether it's up. Yep. And Lord, well, I don't even think I can make it anymore. The peace of God will surpass my understanding. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. God, if you're there and you're all that matters. Lord, thank you for the people in my life. That I've got to witness this firsthand. Yes. Lord, that I've seen that peace that only you give. And Lord, I call on it. Because I know how weak I am. Yes. God, but I believe and I know how strong you are. God, help us as a nation. Yes, Lord God. Help us. To understand it's not about being comfortable. Oh, God. It's about Jesus. Yes, Lord God. He is our peace. Yes, yes. God, without Him, nothing's made this right. God, forgive us when we fail. Yes. God, forgive us that we've made this thing our own instead of yours. Lord, I want to walk in the peace of God because I want to know you. Yes. Lord, I pray if there's someone here that don't have that peace, it makes no difference. How long have been doing? God, if the Holy Spirit would move today, Lord, we're inviting you to do that. Yes. We're asking you, That's God, right. to do what you want to do in my life, yes. in everyone's life. It makes no difference how long, how long they're saved, unsaved. Lord, you said if we'll draw out of you, you'll draw out of us. God, we're asking you to do that among us. Mm. God, forgive me. Yes. Thank you for the word. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand together, please. Thank you, Jake, for obeying the Lord. Yes. Uh, God sent us a message. Yes, thank you, Lord. I hope you can hear it. Yes. One of our former pastors made the statement. 50% of the people that sat in the pews of the meeting house yes. know nothing of the peace of God. That's right. And that was years ago, Greg. That's right. So help us this day. There are only two kinds of wisdom, folks. A human wisdom and a divine wisdom. And you live in the realm of one or the other. Yes. There's no in-between. Gain the whole world. What would you give in exchange for your soul? I'm going to ask some men and women, boys and girls, this is our moment of truth. Let's get the issue settled. Yes. Come to this altar publicly. And I can tell you, through Christ, the peace of God is there for you and for me. Would you come while Jake leads us in this time of invitation? Yes.
others may be God. Thank you for working, Lord. 